It's Reality Check, the game where you decide what is real and what is not. Your jump is to place these shows somewhere on the line from realistic to unrealistic. Let's get our first contestant. Are you ready to play Reality Check? Here's your first program. Funny from us this evening, The Chase. It has become a cliche in movies and television when the action slows down, get a couple of cars racing after one another to inject some excitement. In Los Angeles, they've taken it one step farther. As ABC's Brian Rooney reports, a lot of local television stations have found real-life car chases can be irresistible. We interrupt our regular programming to bring you this report. Right now, the CHP is uh, chasing a gray station wagon. This has been going on, like I say, for an hour. It the pursuit of the chase started in January, when a murder suspect driving this red Volkswagen eluded police cars for hours. Los Angeles television stations covered the chase live from their helicopters. I thought it was an enormous story. Why else would they be doing it? And pretty soon you're watching there, and, you're, and you're, after you're watching for five minutes, you're wondering... Why am I watching this, and what is this? And the answer is, it's nothing. Even some news executives thought it was not much of a story until the chase ended with police shooting the suspect to death, live on television. Since then, car chases have been big news in Los Angeles. Because helicopters give local television stations the ability to cover the chases live, they do. News helicopters followed this truck as it led police through the mountains. They followed this hijacked taxi as it sped along the freeways. They followed a little gray station wagon on a winding chase through suburban streets. Now we are approaching an intersection. Uh, let's see what he does. He's driving right through it. Oh my. Uh, One news director says he tried to abandon a chase when it went too long. We had an avalanche of phone calls asking our public asking us to go back to the car chase and they want to see how it ends up. The last big chase went so long that one station squeezed it into a little box so viewers could see the action and a rerun of Bonanza at the same time. It's the extra, it's the bulletin, it's the we are the best, we're going to get on first, something is happening, you saw it here earlier, and we're going to show you the whole thing tonight at 6, at 11, at 10, whatever. They just rammed him onto the sidewalk. Uh, then, real life abruptly car. turns back to fiction. Right now, we bring you back to regular programming. And if this barricade is still up when we get here, do you know what we're going to do then? There could be a shootout, or they just might cut to the chase. Brian Rooney, ABC News, Los Angeles. <laughs> a dog of the house of Capulet moves me! between our masters. And us, they're men! a disgrace to them if they bear it. Huh? 
friends in Bangkok? No. With customs she couldn't understand. Women do not stand in the presence of His Excellency. And a king she would never forget. Jodie Foster, Chow Young Fat. In the movie, critics are calling one of the best films of the year. Anna and the King, rated PG-13. Friday, only in theaters. to help protect your home and family. Call now and get the security over 25 million people trust for as little as $99 installed. Call ADT today. ADT, security for life. In the universe we inhabit, in Scotland actually, there is a curious sport in which a man in a kilt picks up a telephone pole and tosses it end over end. That's pretty bizarre. But there may be a universe where the pole suddenly leaps into the air and is caught by a very surprised man in a skirt. With us, it's like, you know, the... the, uh, the science fiction in which uh, the uh, space travelers land on a planet and nothing is right. Apples fall up and uh, uh, all rules that uh, we uh, had learned, uh, all the, the uh, intellectual weapons that we had to understand nature didn't work. There was a time when all was order and logic, when a person could rely on good old common sense first read into far corner pocket. For instance, Newton's second law, the acceleration of a particle equals the force imposed divided by the particle's mass. And it works. Know the conditions and you know the result. Excellent. Well, then came Einstein with his special theory of relativity. Two different observers can see two different realities. If a ball could travel near the speed of light and you watched, its mass would tend to be infinite and it would become very thin. If you looked from the point of view of the ball to the static balls, they would grow very thin and curve over. I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over. And I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you. But I want you to know the night that we as a people will get to the promised land. So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. 
just one day after giving this speech, on April 4, 1968, an assassin shot and killed Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. at the Lorraine Motel in Memphis, Tennessee. Three days after pleading guilty to the murder, James Earl Ray claimed that he had been coerced by police into confessing, a confession that resulted in a 99-year prison sentence. In fact, Ray never had a public trial. He died in 1998. Was James Earl Ray the primary party in the assassination, or was King assassinated by a conspiracy that included the U.S. government? In a 1999 civil case brought by the King family, a Memphis jury declared that King was not the victim of gunmen acting alone, and that unnamed others in government agencies had also been involved. Some believe that the Memphis case proves that James Earl Ray was innocent. Others believe that the Memphis case was so flawed that the verdict did not deserve notice. Do you believe in life after death? Some people not only believe, they say they know it exists. They are the one in four people who after traumatic accidents, operations or cardiac resuscitation all describe the same thing, dying and coming back to life, and in between, glimpsing a world beyond. Suddenly I felt warm and at peace. Then it just seemed to happen. Just, I found myself in this tunnel with a very bright light at the end of it, and I was walking towards it. At the end of the tunnel, when I arrived there, there was a bridge. At the far end, of it, there was human shapes, shadows, and I said, I'm coming across. The arms were beckoning me, and a voice in my head said, you can't cross the bridge. It's not your time yet. Then suddenly I was rushing backwards, away from the bridge, away from the shadows. Dr. Peter Fennick of the Institute of Psychiatry studies altered states of consciousness in the brain. Ron Bell's case is one of 400 near-death experiences, or NDEs, which he's collected. Do people make up stories about NDEs? No, I don't think they do. My reason for saying this is that there is a very clear set of features. If you haven't had the experience, it's very difficult to get it right. Dr. Fennick argues that because the accounts of Ron Bell and others are so similar, they must be real. 